Hi Civ fans, Lucif Kaiser here with the first video in my War and Combat series on land units. So let's jump right into it. So as I said, I'm going to be focusing on the land military units in this video. I'll talk about the naval military units in other videos and also the air stuff. Um, but here's uh, just an uh, overview of what we're going to be talking about. So first is going to be looking at the, the foot units, so those without horses or tanks or whatever. So your melee units, your recon units, your ranged units, your anti-cavalry units. Then I'll jump into looking at the mounted or cavalry units, as they're called. Um, and looking at the light and heavy versions. Oh, also the siege units. The siege units should be in there, but um, it's a little miss, uh, miss there. But all right, let's go into it. So, yeah, let's talk about the land military units. They're all obviously produced in the encampment there. So the the first one I want to talk about are the the foot melee units here. So you you start off with the warrior, which you get in the ancient era, with and it starts with 20 melee strength and gets two sight and two movement with uh, an effect of plus five combat strength versus anti-cavalry units. And I should note that all the foot melee units you see here all have this effect, right? So um, any foot melee unit will do good against fighting the spearmen and pikemen and that kind of stuff. The second unit on the list is the swordsman, which you get in the classical era with 36 combat strength. So that's an increase of 16 and a gold mains of two. And it, a swordsman will cost you 20 iron to make. So you'll need that 20, you need to find some iron before you make some swordsman. The next unit is the musketman, which you get in the Renaissance era, which has 55 melee combat strength, which is an increase of plus 19, which is uh, as you can sort of see here, it's the biggest increase among the melee warriors uh, types. And then a gold maintenance of four, which is an increase of two. And Mesketman will require 20 niter, so you'll again need to find another strategic resource in this case. And the fourth unit is infantry, which you get in the modern era. It has 70 melee combat strength, which is an increase of plus 15. And it has a gold mains of six, which is another increase of two. And it has a resource cost of one oil uh, to make, and then a resource maintenance cost of one oil per turn. And then the mechanized infantry, which is the last one you'll you'll get for this line, is available in information era with 85 melee combat strength, which is increase of 15. And then it actually gets a movement buff, so it gets plus one movement. I think it's the only um, melee or land unit, really, uh, the foot of the foot class, I guess, uh, the foot, uh, the ones that are on foot to get a movement buff. And it has gold maintenance of eight, uh, which is an increase of two. And just like the infantry has a resource cost of oil, just one oil to make, and then one oil in maintenance. Now I'd just like to take a moment and look at the foot melee promotion tree and uh, just talk about what I usually get. So I tend to get the battle cry promotion a whole lot just because it's good in a lot of cases. Plus seven combat strength versus meleeing range units. It's just great to have all around. And I'll often get the tortoise promotion next because um, plus 10 combat strength when defending against range attacks is definitely good when you're trying to defend and stuff like that. I, I tend not to get commando just because um, like scaling cliff walls is like kind of like a niche thing. Um, I'd rather get a thin amphibious, which is a lot more uh, beneficial for attacking from the sea or river. I find that you use it a lot more. And then I'll get urban warfare and I think it's called the sway hander and then elite guard uh, for sure. Cause that's, that's a pretty good one. So these are all the ones I have highlighted here are all pretty good. Now onto the foot recon units. So overall, the foot recon units are pretty abysmal in terms of combat strength, which kind of sucks. Um, so the first one you'll get is the scout in the ancient era uh, with a melee combat strength of 10 and a sight of two and a movement of three. So you, you be careful with scouts because you, you'll move faster than you can see. So what I tend to do is I try to move my, my scouts in little, little hops 
so that way I don't run into barbarians. Uh, so it, it also has an effect of gaining 5 XP for finding tribal villages and 10 XP for finding natural wonders. And the next unit you'll get along this line is the Skirmisher, which is available in the medieval era with 20 melee combat strength. Still not, that's pretty not that great in medieval era, uh, which is, you know, plus 10 over the 10. Uh, but it does get a now a ranged attack. So ranged strength of 30 and a range of one. The range of one is not that great. And then same sight, same movement, uh, and a gold maintenance of two. And because it's a range unit now, it gets these uh, debuffs. So minus 17 range strength versus naval units and districts. Now, the, the next one um, on the list is the ranger which you get in the industrial era. And it has a melee combat strength of 45, which is an increase of 15. So finally getting some better numbers for the, the scout, I mean, or the, the recon units. And a range strength of 60, which is pretty good. It's actually pretty um, close to, uh, I think, the field cannon at this stage. Um, so I'll, I'll look at all the units together at the end, and you'll sort of see how the ranger stacks up. And it looks the ranger's actually kind of OK. Um, and it has a gold maintenance of five, which is increase of three, which I think it's the biggest increase of anything. Um, again, has that debuff for range units. And then the last unit for the recon is the spec ops, which um, is available in the atomic era. It has 60 melee combat strength, which should increase to 15 over the ranger. And 65 range strength, which is not a big jump. It's only plus five. Um, but does get an increase of range of two, and then an increase of maintenance of two, so up to seven. And again, it has the, the range debuff, but it also can do a para drop, so you can drop into um, any tile from friendly tiles. I think it's seven tiles away or something. And then uh, you can also use a special attack called a priority target, which lets you target civilian units in a formation so if a warrior is escorting a a like a a builder then you can target the builder without having to actually hit the warrior now onto the recon promotions so um some of these aren't that great so i usually get the ranger or alp alpine promotions depending upon uh where i am what sort of terrain is around me if there's a lot of woods and rainforest, I'll get ranger. If there's a lot of hills, I'll get alpine. Um, but the the alp uh, and the and what's great is about these two promotions that they both lead into um, both sides of the promotion tree. So I tend to usually get gorilla, so I can move around after attacking. So my I can send in my recon unit, do a little attack, and run away. And then ambush is pretty good. So 20 combat strength and all situation so that actually improves the recon unit to being actually something use, usable um and then camouflage only adjacent enemy units can reveal this unit that's pretty good um that basically basically makes them invisible now onto the foot ranged units so starting with the slinger in the ancient era the slinger Honestly, it's not that great. Um, you honestly want to upgrade them to archers as soon as you can, because they have abysmal, I think it's the worst combat strength, so melee combat strength of 5, range combat strength of 15, and only a range of 1, 2 sight and 2 movement. Doesn't cost any gold maintenance, but does have the, the debuff for range units, so minus 17, range strength versus naval uh, units and districts. And so the the real I feel like it, foot range units really only start with uh, archers, so archers again you get the ancient era with me melee strength of 15 and range strength of 25 both increases of 10 over over the slinger and then a range of two which is actually helpful and then a gold mains of one. The third unit is the crossbowman. Um, this I feel like the crossbowman is a big big uh, Upgrade. Uh, I, whenever I see crossbow, uh, if when, whenever my enemies have crossbows and I don't have crossbows, I'm pre usually pretty worried. <laughs> um, so crossbows have a melee combat strength of 30, which is an increase of 15. A range strength of 40, which is an increase of 15 as well. 
and then a gold main is of three, which is increase of two. And again, suffers from the range debuff. And now the fourth unit is the field cannon, which gets a major upgrade. Um, so 50 melee strength, which is increase of 20, and then a range strength of 60, which is increase of 20 as well. And then increase of gold maintenance of two up to five. And the last unit is machine gun, which has melee strength of 65, range strength of 75, which are both increases of 15, and then an increase in gold maintenance of one. So here, here's looking at the foot range promotion. So um, from I, I, I like most of the foot range promotions. Um, you can't go wrong with any of them. They're all sort of situational. I might skip suppression um, just because I have units to do that anyway. So I tend to uh, not use my foot range units because they're also very vulnerable. Um, so you don't really want them to be used to do suppression. So uh, yeah, so all of them pretty good. Volley's great. Um, then arrow storm. And you, uh, if you don't want to get suppression, you can jump to the other side and get emplacement and stuff like that. So they're all all very good in my opinion. Now onto the foot anti cavalry units, um, starting with the spearmen in the ancient era, as a melee combat strength of 25, a sight of two, and a movement of two and gold maintenance of one. And so all the foot anti-cavalry units will share the, this effect. It's plus 10 combat strength versus cavalry. So against any light cavalry or uh, heavy cavalry units. Next is the pikemen, which you get in the medieval era with a melee combat strength of 41, which increase of 16. And then it gets a gold maintenance increase of plus one up to two. Next is the Pike and Shot, which is available in the Renaissance era, with a melee combat strength of 55, which is an increase of plus 14, and a gold maintenance increase of plus 2 to uh, 2 4. Then the next one is the AT crew, or anti tank crew, I guess is the uh, full name of it. And then you get that in the modern era, and melee combat strength of 70, which is an increase of 15. And gold means, uh, funny enough, doesn't change at all. So it says, it says it's at four. So, And then the final unit is the modern uh, AT uh, anti-tank. And it's available in information era with 80 melee combat strength, which is plus 10 over the previous AT crew. <laughs> and then a uh, big jump in gold maintenance of plus four. So I'm not sure. Maybe maybe on the wiki it's, it's missing. Maybe maybe the AT crew is actually six. But from what I looked at, it's, it, it said four. So for foot anti cavalry units, um, I think they're all pretty good. Uh, let me just go through them. Uh, so echelon. Uh, choke points is pretty good. Hold the line. Shield drawn. Thrust. I usually get all these ones. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot I put the animations in here. But yeah, so these are the ones that I, I usually go for. Um, echelon. Thrust. Shield drawn. Choke points. And hold the line. Um, uh, I'll, I'll basically explain why I cho choose what I cho chose here. So uh, I find Shieldtron a bit better because plus 10 combat strength when defending versus melee class units is a bit more consistent than the double support bonus because support bonus is all about having units around you. And if you don't have units around you, you're not going to get that. Whereas Shieldtron, you're always going to get that bonus. Um, redeploy, eh, like at that point. Like this is a, a very late promotion, and at that point, like you got tanks and stuff, right? So, um, I, I'm not I'm not too worried about that one. Now onto the foot siege units. So, the the first one available is uh, the catapult, which is available in the classical era, with a melee combat strength of 23 and a 
bombard strength. So bombard strength is a little bit different than range strength, so it's only good against uh, actual against walls. Um, so bombard strength of 35, range of two, uh, sight of two, and a movement of two, and a gold minus of two. And it has an effect of minus 17 bombard strength against land units. So really, all for and that's the same for all the different siege units here. So really, you don't want to be using your siege units on land units. Like don't like you could, but um, they're better put to use against the walls. That's what their main purpose is. Um, the next one you'll get is the bombard, it, which you get in the Renaissance era, with a melee combat strength of 43, which is an increase of plus 20, which is rather big, and then a bombard strength increase of 20 up to 55 and then a gold maintenance increase of two up to four and then bombards cost 20 niter to make and then on to the next unit which is artillery which you get in the modern era with melee combat strength of 60 which increases 17 and a bombard strength of 80 which increases 25 and i think that's one of the biggest increases you see in a unit um, and then Increase in gold mates of plus two up to six, and artillery will now will then require oil um, to make. So you need one oil to make them, and then one oil uh, in resource maintenance for, per turn. The last unit is the rocket artillery, which is available in information era with melee combat strength of of seventy, which is an increase of no, sorry melee combat strength seventy, which is an increase of plus ten. And a bombard strength of 95, which increases plus 15, and a range of th of three, which is um, much more helpful for sieging those cities, and a sight of of three, which is uh, increase of one, which is definitely also helpful in spotting you know cities and stuff like that, so you don't have to get too close um, or send units um, to go see the cities. Um, and then the gold main increase of two up to eight. And then again, rocket artillery require oil to make, and then one oil per turn for maintenance. Um, now let's look at the different siege promotions. So uh, the, basically the left-hand side's really good uh, about, about finding land units. So basically negates um, the debuff that the bombards units have so if, uh, I'll just go back really quick so again it says minus 17 bombard strength against land units if you get the two if you get grape shot and shrapnel you're getting the plus 7 and then plus 10 so you're negating that minus 17 so now you're doing standard damage but I'd much rather you know invest in the the right hand side which is actually helpful in terms of attacking cities um, so plus seven combat strength when defending. Um, so that's going to be good because your your siege units are often going to be targeted by the AI. Um, and then plus ten combat strength versus district defenses. So this gives them a little more survivability against um, districts and also um, helps them take down the districts a bit more too, right? And then the expert crew is definitely useful. Can move it can attack after moving. This lets you um, move and attack in the same turn. And then plus one range at the end, that's definitely useful. So at the end you'll get, if you give the rock artillery, you're gonna be having, what, so four range, which is crazy. Um, uh, next on to the mounted units. So I'll start off with the mounted light cavalry units. The first one you'll get is the Horseman, which you can get in the Classical Era, with a melee combat strength 36, two sight, four movement, uh, gold mains of two, and they cost 20 horses to make. And all these cavalry units all have this an ignore enemy zone of control effect, so they can go in, hit units, and run away if they need to. The next unit is the Courser, which you get in the medieval era with 44 melee combat strength, which is an increase of plus eight, which is not a huge increase, but given that you're going from 
one era to another, it's um, not too bad because usually the if you look at if you remember the other slides, usually the the next unit is like two um, eras away, but this one's only one, so um, that's understandable. And the has a movement increase, so now it's up to five. So the courses are super fast. Um, and gold maintenance of of three, which is an increase of one. And again, they cost 20 horses to make. And then the next unit you'll get is the cavalry, which is which you'll get in the industrial era, which has 62 combat strength, which is plus 18, which is uh, pretty good. And then gold maintenance of plus two, um, so up to five. And then again, it's funny that even in industrial you're still using horses. So it costs 20 horses to make. And the final light cavalry unit is the helicopter, which is available in the atomic era, which has 82 melee combat strength, which is plus 20 over the cavalry unit before, and then plus one sight, so it's at three now, but it loses one movement, so it's at four, which I don't know, I kind of feel like helicopters should have pretty good movement. I don't know, but um, it has a special effect I'll get into, but um, it has a increase of gold maintenance, so it's at seven now, so up by two, and it costs um, one aluminum to make, and uh, has a resource maintenance of one aluminum per turn. So just, uh, as I said, it has the helicopters have one additional effect is that they all terrain only costs one movement. So instead of uh, hills and stuff like that costing uh, extra movement to move across or same thing with rivers, um, they're all treated as one. So I guess that sort of makes up for the lost movement there. there. Now on to the promotions for the mounted light cavalry units. So um, the one I, I tend not to go for is uh, the pillaging one, so the depredation. Uh, I feel the most most of them are pretty good, so I I tend to stick to the right hand side. So plus five combat strength when attacking ranged and siege units, and then two two times flanking bonus, and then you can get uh, plus one movement, so that would help negate that that negative movement you get at the end for helicopters, and then all, uh, again, yeah. Spiking the guns, pretty good against siege units, and then escort mobility, racing units all inherit escorts' movement speed. Uh, that's okay. Uh, like I, I, I'd, get, I'd rather get the spiking the guns, I think, or some of the other ones. Now into the last class of units that we're going to be talking about today is the mounted heavy cavalry. So the first one is the heavy chariot with melee combat strength of 28. A sight of two, a movement of two, and a gold maintenance of one. So I think it's the only ancient era um, unit that has gold maintenance, or I think maybe did the archer do? But anyways, it, it has gold maintenance. Um, again, uh, the cavalry units ignore enemy zone of control, so you can note, note that there. But um, the special thing about the heavy chariot is it has plus one movement if it begins on flat terrain. The next unit is the the knight, which you get in the medieval era, who has melee combat strength of 48, which is an increase of plus 20, which is rather big, and then a movement of four, which is plus two, and then a gold maintenance of four, which is an increase of three, and knights will require 20 iron to make. And if you look on the no, on the effects here, it loses that plus one movement if it begins on flat terrain. Next unit is a cuirassier, or cuirassier. I'm not pronouncing that right. Um, and it's available in the industrial era. Has a melee combat strength of 64, which is plus 22 over the over the knight, and has a movement of five, which is plus one, and then goal maintenance of four, which is the same as before, and then again resource cost of 20 iron, and the only effect it has is it ignores enemy zone of control. The fourth unit is a tank, which has a melee combat strength of 80, which is plus 16, and it loses one movement, so it's at four now, and then increase gold maintenance to two. 
no, increase gold maintenance to six by two. <laughs> there you go. And then a resource cost of oil, uh, of one oil, and then resource maintenance of one oil per turn. And now, for some reason, the tanks re, re get the, the plus one movement. It begins on flat terrain. So, um, yeah, you get the minus movement, but you get the plus movement for a flat terrain. So, there you go. And then the last one is the modern armor, which is available in the information era. And it gets as a 90 melee combat strength, which is plus 10. Um, not, not a huge increase, but, you know, it's okay. Um, and then a gold maintenance cost of 8, which is plus increase to plus 2. And the, again, the resource cost for modern armor tanks is oil, one, one, oil, one oil to make. And then resource maintenance cost of 1 oil per turn. And again, it also gets the ignore enemy zone of control and plus one movement if it begins on flat terrain. Now onto the promotions for the heavy cavalry units. Um, I tend to usually go with the, the right hand side. Um, so uh, I usually go with barding. So combat strength uh, when defending versus ranged attacks. Um, and then route, which is plus five combat strength against damage units. So uh, lets you really help help helps you like kill off um, any sort of straggling units and then reactive armor plus seven common strength when defending against heavy cavalry and anti-cavalry units so i think that's a lot better than uh, armor piercing which is just plus seven combat strength against other heavy cavalry units like um why wouldn't you get the, the other one um i think this is is, is more uh has more uh it's more situ uh, other one's more situational and this one's more um you can use in more situations and then breakthrough uh plus one additional attack per turn if movement allows yeah that's that, yeah, i think those are all pretty good um the one thing i would get maybe on the, the left hand side is charge plus 10 common strength because plus 10 is a significant amount so plus 10 common strength versus fortified defender yeah i might get that one so uh now now just a to sum, sum it all up, here's a, just a land uh, unit overview. Um, so again, looking at the melee units, they're good for attacking. Um, the, the bad side to melee units is they tend to be resource heavy. So you need iron, then you need niter, and then you need oil. So um, lots of resources to get um, in order to uh, maintain these things. And then the recon unit, which um, you know, the the good thing about the recon units is they're you know they're pretty fast, um, not like super fast, but they're okay, and they're good for scouting. So good for scouting the map and stuff like that, um, and also like finishing kills as I said before. So I tend to use my recon units uh, as like sort of executioners. So like um, just waiting in the wings to like pounce and like kill off a unit if I need to, um, and then uh, the, the bad side is that they're extremely work early on. Even in the late game, they're not like super great. Um, and they often, I find they often get like trapped behind enemy borders or something like the borders close and then he's stuck somewhere far away and then he gets killed by some barbarians or something. So I think that's sort of like the downside of recon units is that they kind of like, you kind of like get one and then they die. <laughs> but um, uh, the, the next one is uh, range units. So range units are great for defending because um, they can shoot and not get hit. And so they're safe um, and they can help chip down uh, defenses um, for early sieges and stuff like that, but again, they don't have a lot of damage against the, the, the siege against cities and stuff, so um, you, you can use them, um, but uh, it's better getting using the, the actual siege uh, equipment. Uh, the good thing about rage units is they have no resource cost, so if, if you went back to the page, um, I didn't have resources there because um, they don't require any, so uh, that if you you're playing like a small empire with, and there's not a lot of resources. Make sure you invest in range units because um, you don't need any resources for them. Uh, and sorry about that. The, uh, my mic shut off. And then. Uh, as I was saying, so yeah, the, the ranged units are weak to melee units. And the the next set of units, so anti-cavalry units, they're, they're also good for defending. They're okay on offense, uh, and they have no resource cost. The 
The downside to anti-Calvarinas is they're very weak to melee. And now onto siege units. So the siege units, obviously, they're good for sieging and defending against naval. And they're also actually pretty good against defending against naval units because none of the other units, range units, don't get a bonus to naval. Um, they actually get debuff. So siege units are the really only thing you can use against naval units. Um, and the downside of siege units is they're usually pretty vulnerable to attack because they're not very strong in terms of melee, and they're, they tend to be a little resource heavy. Um, next is like cavalry units, so they're usually the fast. They're about the I think they're fastest units in the game. Um, so good for picking off units and uh, pillaging and that kind of stuff, um, doing little skirmishes and stuff like that. The only downside is that you know they're weak to anti-cavalry, um, and the con I guess like they do cost resources. You do need horses and stuff. Um, but I find resources are pretty plentiful. Uh, horses are pretty plentiful, and also aluminum. Uh, uh, the, yeah, the only downside is I guess the aluminum at the end because the aluminum is kind of hard to get. And the last thing is heavy cavalry. Um, so the good thing about heavy cavalry is they're pretty fast and they're probably like one of the strongest units in the game. Um, again, same sort of things as light cavalry. They're weak to anti-cavalry, um, but heavy cavalry are definitely more resource heavy in terms of um, uh, the resources, I, I'd say. And now here's a, a great grand overview uh, of over all the different units. Um, here in the bars, you can see uh, the ranged or bombard strength of the units, depending um, on the, the unit, of course. And then the melee strength is the, the circles there. So um, feel free to like screenshot this or look at this in your free time. Um, but I, I, for the most part, I, I just want to see whether or not um, there's any major dips or um, uh, things that are missing uh, in terms of uh, strength and stuff like that. But I think for over the most part, the most, most of the land units um, scale pretty well. Um, the only thing I'd say is the recon units could probably use a buff just because of how they're used and stuff like that. Um, I think uh, one thing I thought of is maybe that... Um, they have a buff where they get hidden when they're in woods or rainforest or something like that. I think that would, you know, help them survive a little more if they're out and uh, they need a heal or something like that. Because, um, like, barbarians are chasing them, they could run to, like, a woods and just hide there for a bit and hunker down, and then they could go out and they can still live. So um, stay tuned, because uh, uh, pretty soon I'll be putting out the next part, which is on naval and air units. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And also try to follow me on Reddit. Um, there should be a social link or something uh, probably in the video description or uh, somewhere on my YouTube channel. All right, thanks. Bye.